Good morning, wonderful people. How are y'all today? Good. I hope you're doing really good. And I'm glad that you are. So today is, um, I didn't get to do a What's Going On Wednesday, but I am doing a Think About It Thursday. How about that? And today I want to think about the different kinds of people we allow into our life. As you can see, my studio is a little bit different. I'm actually in the car. Um, just wanted a, a different scenery or whatnot. Um, so I came across this post on Instagram, not Instagram, Facebook the other day, and it was talking about toxic people to avoid. And it talked about eight different kinds of people that you'll literally want to avoid. And excuse me a little bit, y'all. I'm eating a cough drop because, um, yeah, it's that time of the year. I'm eating a Hall's cough drop. But anyway, so... When I saw this, I hit like and I reshared it. But then I went back today and I got to thinking about the thing that this, that they said, the eight types of people that you need to avoid. These are very toxic people who will harm you and harm your perception of other people. And just basically, these are not people who give off a positive energy. Now, I'm almost certainly positive that at one point or another, we've all exhibited this type of these types of behaviors but a person who's consistently exhibiting this type of behavior is someone who you will not want to be around. So let's go ahead and break it down. I said there's eight of them, so let's get right into it. Number one, the judgmental person. What does it mean to be judgmental? Mentally, I'm judging you. For example, when... Let me give you some examples of, of judgmental people. Um... A good example, in church, a church person who may see a person with tattoos all on them and figure, oh, they're so worldly, they're so secular, they, you know, what are they doing here? Judgmental. Um, when you see a black man or black woman dressed in what would be considered urban attire and you just automatically assume they're ghetto or they're low class or whatever the situation may be, when you see... Um, uh, Hispanic or something like that and you know you automatically assume oh they're an immigrant or whatever you want judgmental meaning you basically don't know anything about this person their situation but they consistently judge that person without even knowing that person now I bet we've both been on both ends of this spectrum we've judged someone without knowing them and we've been judged without someone knowing us but my point is this if you're around someone or if you're that person that's consistently judging people and you don't even really know anything about them, then you need to stop. You need to stop or you need to remove yourself from or being around that person. Point blank period. Because you can miss out on a lot of good relationships by judging people, not getting to know them and just assuming something. Because you know what assume means. I remember somebody explained that to me. Assume means you make an ass out of you and me. I'm just saying that's what the word breaks down to. So, number two, the kind of person that you should really try to avoid is the envious person. An envious person is someone who looks at you, your situation, your career, maybe things that you have, and they they feel like, one, you shouldn't have it, and two, that they should have it. Now, if you're an envious person, you need to stop it, or if you're around someone who is envious, then you need to really cut that person loose or, you know, limit your time around them. The point of the matter is this. We all have the ability to get up and get out and get whatever it is that we want out of life. Some of us actually grasp those opportunities. Some of us just sit back and feel like those opportunities are just going to hop, skip, jump into our lap. Not so. So if you have a friend who's envious, like say, for instance, you have a friend girl who um, you have a boyfriend and she doesn't. And she's always like, you know... Maybe even trying to mess up your relationship with your boyfriend because she wants a relationship like what you have, but, you know, for whatever reason, she doesn't. So she's envious of your relationship and she wants that and even will go so far as to try to destroy what you have. That's what an envious person does. Try to destroy your reputation, try to destroy your anything that they possibly can because they feel like what you have, whatever it be, your personality, your money, your career, your looks, your ability to speak, your uh, athletic ability, whatever it is, they feel like whatever you have that you shouldn't have it, it should belong to them and they want to mess up the fact that you do have it. 
a person like that, you definitely, definitely want to get them outside of your circle because that's not a person who you would want close to you. That's like a Judas to your Jesus. Number three, control freaks. A control freak is a person who has to control every single thing about every single thing. We all want some level of control. Being out of control, nobody likes situations being out of control. But a person who always wants you to do what they say do, a person who always wants you to do what they think should be done, a person who always wants you to go where they want you to go, that's a control freak. A person who's just so trying to bind you up to the point to where you don't really even have a say so about the situation. In relationships, girls can do this to guys and guys can do this to girls. Your boyfriend can be a control freak. Your girlfriend can be a control freak. Your parents can be a control freak. A lot of people in your life can be a control freak. You can even be a control freak. Sometimes you have to just allow yourself to relax and to live life and recognize, one, everything is not under your control. There's a bigger set of operations going on that you can't even see to where, you know, some things just happen in life. Life happens and that's just what it is. There's no way around it. You have to be prepared to know that life happens happens you cannot control everything as much as you want to you cannot control everything and if you are around a person or if you are a person who is totally into controlling things and people all the time you're going to forever be upset because there's going to be some things that people you are not going to be able to control there's going to be some things that you are not going to be able to understand and guess what you either have to roll with them or get rolled over one of the two those are gonna be your only options so you might as well go ahead and put into practice now that you know guess what i can't control every single thing about life so let me go ahead and try to relax some and let me go ahead and try to trust that the process is always going to work out to my good number four the arrogant person arrogant basically is a person who feels like they're better than everyone else they Um, They look down on people. They're haughty. Um, You may not, a person may not have as much money, looks, education, um, experience as that person. So that person tends to look down their nose at them. Instead of respecting each individual as equal human beings, an arrogant person is a person who will look down on you or really look down on whoever they can. And a lot of times, arrogance comes out of, in my opinion, lack of self-esteem even though you may have all of these things money career house experience education you feel the need to look down on other people why because you're really not secure in the things that you have and all those things that i listed all those accomplishments all those accolades you're still not secure in who you are and you probably don't even know who you are therefore you try to look down on people and downplay who other people are in an effort to make yourself seem higher a no-go If you know somebody like this, exit stage left, (laughs) delete them, ease on back, fall on back, whatever the situation may be. Because that person, let me get this glare out. That person is definitely not someone who you would want to spend um, a significant amount of time with. Let's see. Victims. Victims are people who always feel like they've received the short end of the stick. They always make it seem like that whatever the situation occurred, whatever situation occurred, they were the one who was the victim. They didn't perpetuate anything. They didn't start anything. Everything's always happening to me. Oh, I can't catch a break. Oh, I'm always receiving the short end of the stick. Oh, it's me. It's me. The thing about life is this. You have a lot of options and choices that you can exercise daily. If there's something that you don't like about life or you don't like about your situation or you don't like about anything, you have the ability to change it now. If you don't like your job, get up and start looking for another one. If the guy you're with is not treating you right, let him go, drop that zero and go get with a hero. If the girl you're dealing with is not treating you right, let bye Felicia. Yes, let her go. 7.8 billion people in this world. You do not have to stick around people who are toxic, who are poisoning your life, who are bringing your quality of life down. And you don't have to do it. Number six, negative Nancys. We all have something negative to say at some points of time, but you haven't been around that person that they always got something negative to say. You could say the sky is blue. They could say, well, you know what? It is blue, but it's just too blue. It's just too much blue. 
know the sky gonna be too blue. Well, you know, it is sunny outside, but whew, that sun just all in my eyes. Just negative with no end. I'm not saying we all just are 100% positive all the time, but you know exactly what I mean when I say those people who consistently are negative in what they say, negative in what they think, negative in what they, how they feel, negative in how they act. You can't get anything positive out of them. You can get something that's positively negative. They speak negatively. They're just a negative person to be around. Why? Why be around a person like that? If that person doesn't have enough sense to get their life together to where they can go out and change some things, why should you be the dumpster that they keep coming to bring their trash to and dumping their trash at your feet because they can't get their life together? Not so. You deserve more and you should give yourself more than hanging around somebody who consistently brings a negative energy, a negative flow to your life. It's not fair to you. Next, liars. I don't even really have to explain this. If you know somebody who's a liar, I mean a consistent liar, you can't trust them. How can I walk with you in friendship-wise, business-wise, romantic-wise, if I cannot trust you from day to day? I can't trust that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. I can't trust that you're going to be where you say you're going to be. I can't trust that what you say will happen will happen. I do not like to be around people who I cannot trust because I don't know what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and how you're going to do it. I at least like some level of predictability with the person that I'm dealing with. A person who lies consistently for whatever reason, I don't know if it's a spirit or if it's just that you just ain't got nothing else to do and that's how you make your life more interesting is by lying and embellishing the truth. Either way, I don't want to be around you. I don't want to talk to you on a consistent basis. I don't want to deal with you on a consistent basis. I'll be cordial, nice, and respectful like I am to most people, but as far as building something with you substantial, no. I'm not going to do it. You're a liar. I can't trust you. Everything that comes out of your mouth, I don't know whether it's real or not. And if I don't know if it's real or not, then why am I even talking to you? Why am I even trying to communicate with you? I'm not going to do it. Last but not least, number eight, gossipers. These are the people who you really, 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 really need to avoid. It's people that I know personally who... That's what they do. That's how they get their kicks and giggles is they gossip about other people. Gossip is when you are maliciously talking about someone else. These people are people who you want to avoid like the plague. Because my thing is this, and my mama says this, and she's a little country, so she said, a dog that'll bring a bone will take a bone. In other words, gossipers typically don't stop at gossiping when they get to you. So they'll bring you all this information about what other people are doing, how they doing it, why they doing it, if they're doing it. But at the end of the day, they're going to talk to somebody else about you. There's no confidence I can have in a person like that. I can't confide in a person who is going to bring up my issues to somebody else. But, but believe this, if they're bringing you other people's issues, they're talking about your issues too. That's one of the reasons why I personally... I'm very, I'm very uh, watchful about the, the, the female friends that I have. For whatever reason, a lot of females gossip because they like to talk. And that's fine. Talking is fine as long as you're talking about the right things. But when you're gossiping about what people are wearing, what their hair looks like, what their makeup looks like, what their clothes look like, what their relationship consists of, about their kids, and all this other stuff. You have nothing more to do than to talk about what somebody else is doing. All that energy and thought that you're putting into that, you could take that and put it into making your life better. Because I'm almost 100% positive, everybody who's watching this video, and everybody who will watch this video, there's something in your life right now that you need to correct. So instead of focusing on the lives of other people, how about we take our own energy and focus on the lives of ourselves and how to implement our uh, new, positive, fresh 
good things into our own life to where we don't even have time to worry about other people. Sometimes my mom calls me selfish. It's not selfish. It's just that, look, a, people, a lot of people are messy. When I say messy, I mean they like mess. They like to talk about mess, watch mess, listen to mess. Me personally, I like to find out how can I become better? How can I make the people around me better? Not how I can make the world messier than what it is. We already know we live in a jacked up world, but you want to contribute to the jacked up -ness. Yeah, I just made that word up. Of this world, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So again, these are to me, the eight kind of people that you need to avoid. One, the judgmental person. Two, the envious person. Three, control freaks. Four, arrogant people. Five, victims. Six, negative Nancys. Seven, liars. Eight, gossipers. These are all people, in my opinion, who will not contribute much to your life positively. I think that they can be very toxic and poisonous to your relationships and to your life. You should find yourself trying to find people who enhance your life and make your life better and bring positivity to your life. Because at the end of the day, we have so many different negative things coming at us. We don't need any more. So I hope this has helped you get a little bit better grasp on the types of people that we should try to surround ourselves with. Are people going to be perfect? No, we don't expect them to be. But if there's character flaws, one thing about it is if I'm your friend, I should be able to help you and you should be able to help me. So if you have friends who are falling into these categories, help them out by letting them know, look, that's not cool. And don't be afraid to speak up. So I hope this has helped you. And as always, I'm going to give you a big old hug from afar. And this has been your girl, Tanisha, coming from my new studio. Not really. I'm just chilling in the car. But until next time, love you. Bye.